message for us. But uh, what I want to do this morning is, um, we're going to, I'm going to be reading out of the book of Hosea, chapter 1. Hosea chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 9. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to borrow y'all's imagination for about 25 or 30 minutes. <clears throat> Luke, up oh, Luke. Hosea chapter 1. Everybody there say amen. 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 All right. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 1. And y'all uh, y'all going to have to bear with me on some of these names. Uh, uh, chapter 1. The Bible says the word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, <coughs> in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. Verse number two, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, <coughs> take, unto the <coughs> take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto her, Call her name lo ru -hama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor sword, nor battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned lo ru -hama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name lo am -me, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Father, thank you, Lord, for the reading of, the, yeah. of your word, God. Thank you for, uh, Lord, all that you've done for us this morning, how good it's been, Lord, the yeah. sweet spirit that... Uh, Lord, that we felt this morning in Sunday school and the good singing, Lord, I, I thank you for that, dear God. I thank you for uh, another opportunity to allow me to uh, stand before this church, Lord, and uh, Lord, speak to them on your behalf, God, and I pray, God, that you'd remove all of me, God, and fill me up with you, Lord. Help me to uh, say everything that you would have me to say, and God, and uh, Lord, uh, have your way in this service, dear Lord. God, I do want to remember uh, the family of Uncle Larry. Uh, yeah. God, I pray, that, Lord, that you'd love on uh, those families yeah. only like you can do, God, and help them with that, Lord. God, I thank you for our pastor. I thank you yeah. for, uh, God, for allowing him to uh, let me uh, uh, preach again, dear God, in his absence, Lord. And I pray, God, that you'd watch over him as he travels back and forth, uh, taking uh, Becca back to college, dear God, be with him. I pray, God, that they would have a, a, a wonderful time together before he has to come back, Lord, and watch over him and take care of him. Lord, I love him, and I thank you for him, uh, dear God, and I, I pray, God, that you'd be with him, uh, Lord. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. You've been good to us, Lord. Um, Lord, you've uh, you, you woke us up again. You gave us a good week last week, and I thank you for it. Bless your word, dear God. I pray, God, that you'd help me, Lord. I need you. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord, I know that you don't need me, but God, I need you every day, and I pray, God, uh, Lord, that you'd use me this morning. 
Uh, Lord, if there's one here lost today, uh, God, uh, may today be the day that uh, that, that would be the last Amen. day that they would be lost. Lord, there may be some folks here that's uh, slipping away from you, God. Amen. Lord, I've been down that road. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd speak to their heart. They don't want to go down that road, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd, uh, uh, Lord, uh, prick their hearts and, and show them that all that matters, all that matters in this world, God, is you Amen. and for Amen. us to live for you yeah. for all that you've done for us. And we thank you and praise you for everything Amen. that we've done, uh, uh, God, for everything that you've done. Help us, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I wanna, uh, I, I've got something a little bit different this morning. I see you. And y'all gonna have to forgive me because the medicine I take makes my mouth. Well, uh, I see you, my mom used to say my mouth was so dry, I'm spitting cotton. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I feel today. But um, I, I want to borrow your imagination this morning. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to be like Hosea Listen. and uh, kind of preach his testimony. So if, if I can borrow your imagination, just think as me as not Dwayne up here, but I'm Hosea. Your pastor invited me today in his absence to share with you my testimony on the preacher who got hooked up with the hoochie. This all started during the royal reign of Jeroboam in the northern kingdom of Israel between 750 and 725 B.C. Yahweh had been disrespected by Israel playing around with other gods. So God recruited myself and two other dudes, Amos and Micah, and sent us to go represent him to the people. This all began on a hot, sweltering night. I had just finished up with one of many crusades. Uh, there, on there in the mountain of Tabor's auditorium, and as I descended the heights of Mount Tabor, suddenly I felt the presence of God. He began to talk uh, to me. He said to me, Hosea, I need to talk to you. I need to pull the file on my people because my people have committed adultery. Mm -hmm. They've gone off whoring after other gods. And I want to talk to you, Hosea, because you remember our covenantal agreement, that agreement that I made with her father Abraham and Moses and then Joshua and then David. But as I look at her now because of her apostasy, her idolatry, her immorality. Now it's like the morning cloud. It has faded away. She has ruptured our relationship. She's fractured our friendship. She's allowed strange gods to push into my private domain. As God shared his pain with me that day, I knew that God was experiencing excruciating pain. Pain only known to those who have had their love rejected. Mm -hmm. And as he talked to me, it was like I stepped into some kind of strange stargate, some kind of strange virtual reality. He took me back over the history of my people. He allowed me to see situations after situations of where my people wavered and waffled, waffled in their commitment to God. He showed me where Israel committed many acts of adultery with other gods. And as I stood there looking and listening, I wondered, how do you comfort the comforter? How do you help the helper? How do you heal the healer? And since I didn't know, I just stood in silent sadness just waiting on God to erupt in a kind of cosmic rage that he would declare that he would annihilate Israel even from the annals of history. But to my utter amazement, up out of the, black, uh, out of the bowels of eternal forgiveness came a soothing word of grace. 
He said, I will have mercy on the house of Amen. Judah. And I will save her, not by sword, by battle, by horses, yep. by bow, nor by arrow, nor by horsemen, but by the power of my love. Amen. I said, God, I'm sure that the people of Judah will be delighted to hear, hear that, but what does all that have to do with me? I'm a preacher. Do you want me to preach Amen. to them? I'm a prophet. I'm ready to prophesy. If you just put your words in my mouth, I will say what, said, what doth saith the Lord. You know what he said? He said, no, Hosea, I don't want you to preach. I don't want you to prophesy. I want you to get married. He said, if you get married, you'll do more good than preaching and prophesying. I said, okay, that's all good. Mary, I'm down with that. I said, God, it's, it's kind of ironic that you bring this up. It, it, it was just the other day I said to myself, Hosea, you need a wife. And you know, I haven't said anything to this young lady, but I've had my eye on of this one particular lady and God she's whoo if you could just see her. oh you you God you you have seen her but God she is the bomb all that and two bags of chips <laughs> check this out God her daddy is a leader in a synagogue she, come, she comes from a strong Orthodox Jewish background. Her reputation is impeccable with the men. She comes to all my crusades. She even helps me pass out Ten Commandment tracts. I know she's been checking me out. God, she will be a great asset to my ministry as well as a good wife and a mother. And as I stood there waiting on God, to stamp his approval on my recommendation. His answer was like dynamite going off in my ear as it ripped my expectations to pieces. For he said to me, Hosea, I know the girl in whom you speak. I know her pedigree. I know about all her noble credentials. And you're right. She will make somebody a good wife. But Hosea, she ain't the one I have in mind. In fact, the girl I have in mind doesn't have the noble qualities of that girl. She comes out of a, uh, she doesn't come out of a rich Jewish background. She doesn't go to any of your crusades. In fact, you can find her up at the pagan temple. What about that? Hosea, I said yes. He's a, uh, she's a hoochie. I said, she's a what? He said, Jose, she's a prostitute. Yep. I said, you are asking me, the preacher, to marry a ho, I mean, a hoochie? Yep. He said, yes. Do I have to explain to you how I felt? How would you feel? I know God always asks to do some strange things. I remember he asked Isaiah to walk the streets for three years naked. He asked Jeremiah to walk uh, with a yoke around his shoulder for many years. He asked Ezekiel to make a fool of himself preaching to dead dry bones in the valley. But never did he ask anybody to do what he's asked me to do. I can't tell you how thrilled off I am I thought it would be good for an omniconfident God to personally select my bride. I don't know God. Uh, I don't know God if I can do that. You see, I was caught between my unwavering loyalty to Yahweh in a mortal battle with my inflexible Jewish trait. So after much deliberation, I gave my verdict. Not willing. I was not willing to dishonor my heritage. I was not willing to dishonor and disgrace my religion. So I said to God, 
I can't do it. I'm not willing. I said, I know you're God. I know you're the biggest, baddest thing in the universe, and you can snap me like a toothpick, but I'd rather die. I'd rather die in dignity than live in disgrace. Die. Yes, that's my answer. <clears throat> God, you made me a, a free moral agent. You told me I had the right to choose. I choose to die. <clears throat> so I stood up, got ready to die. You tell God, you're ready to die. You better get ready. I said, God, come on. I said, come on, death. I'd heard death rides a pale horse. I'd heard death wails a long two-edged blade. I heard death makes quick work of its prey. So I closed my eyes because I didn't want to see death rip me apart. I closed my eyes and after standing there what seemed an eternity, I opened one, then I opened the other to see if death was coming. Death was nowhere in sight. So as I prepared to slowly and discreetly slip away from that moment and that mountain, as I got ready to run, God said, the girl's name is Gomer. Yeah, hey, Gomer. Who in the world wants to be married to someone that Gomer? God, I don't want to be all hugged up to a Gomer. God said, I still want you to marry her. Amen. I said, God, listen, maybe I will. Maybe, maybe I will marry her, but but you gotta give me you gotta give me the 401, 411 on this. I, I, I gotta have some information about this. I mean, what am I gonna tell my brothers, Amos and Micah, when they find out about this? I mean, what am I gonna tell my homies when they come to me and ask me, Prophet? Preacher, what's up with this? So when they come to me, I can say, uh, well, bro, man, it's like this. God said to me, you know, God said, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing that God uses the bridle of patience, and this is so true, to control the wild horses of rebellion. He was patient with me. Finally, he said, Hosea, this is about a revelation and not information. He said, you got to have to trust the revelation before you can trust the information. That's, right. That's what he said to me. He said, it's about trust. <clears throat> he said to me, Hosea, I want to know when you can trace my hand, can you, when, Hosea, I want to know when you can't trace my hand, can you trust my heart? You see, I don't always give a pre-flight itinerary on where I'm going. Sometimes I just say, follow me. Amen. And then for you, it becomes a matter of trust. Not trust in my reasonableness. <coughs> not trust in, in how much sense I make. But do you trust me? Amen. Because otherwise, you make my reasonableness and my practicality your God. You make up your mind based on your faith and your trust, and then we'll talk. That's just the way it is. Now here's where it gets deep. I started throwing out some physiological theology. I said, God, what glory are you going to get by hooking up a holy man and a hoochie? Holy and hoochie. What, what, what glory are you going to get? What glory are you going to get out of putting together a preacher and a prostitute? What glory are you going to get by wedding piety and promiscuity? God, what glory are you going to get putting together righteousness, righteousness and wretchedness? When the sacred is with the secular, what glory are you going to get? God said, Hosea, when I called you into this partnership, I told you that I was the senior partner. Yes. As senior partner, I reserved the right to make some independent uh, decisions without asking for your vote. Amen. 
I said, all right. Okay, I'll do it. Where is she? He said, up at the temple. As I started and found myself in the way of obedience, and this is important, just in the way of obedience, God began to shine the light of understanding on my path. Amen. You know, how, that's how it works yep. today. When you start obeying God with just the little knowledge that you have, God will open up huge understanding in your mind. He will. God said to me, now that you're willing, let me tell you a little something, something. Mm -hmm. I said, God, please do. He said, Hosea, I want you to use this incompatible relationship to show that God's unbreakable love for the unlovely they ought to be shouting here because every one of us is on the Yes, amen. Bless the Lord. Because all of us are in the unlovely crowd. We are. Bless the Lord. I hear some of you saying, I ain't no hoochie. Oh, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. You may not sell your body, but you prostitute your principles. Mm -hmm. You may not sell your body, but you compromise your convictions. What about that? That makes you a hoochie. You cut your neighbor behind the back. Mm -hmm. My hoochieisms, my wife's hoochieisms may not be your hoochieisms, but there's some hoochieisms in all of us. Listen. Even now, when I look back on the gallantry of my wife's effort, you know that girl tried. I remember the day she came home from the market. She had bought her a new dress. She had got her a new hairdo. New hat. Then she got her some of them press on nails. Five pair of new shoes. And then she asked me, do I look like a preacher's wife now? I said, honey, you sure do. But my wife was caught in sort of a catch-22. She told me that one day that she felt caught between a push and a pull. She was pulled by the wiles of her old world. She said she was hemmed in by habits and gripped by customs. But while she was being pulled, she was being pushed. See, Gomer's first encounter with religion was not a good one. She discovered that when people have religion and not a relationship, it allows them to reject those who aren't like themselves. So she was pushed by religion. She was pushed by piosity, re religiosity, synagogueism. She was pushed out of the fellowship. She was pushed out of the synagogue. And she was pushed out of the family. Then one day she told me, Hosea, if this is what your religion is about, if this is what your God is about, I don't want it. They never let her forget where she came from. How about that? They wouldn't let her forget what she used to be. Mm -hmm. Those of us in that great cloud of witnesses see the same thing for uh, a lot of people on the earth today. Episode. They won't let people forget. I say it. And the amazing thing is, to me, that everybody's an ex-something. Bless the Lord, that's but let me tell you, I can't blame the people for all of my wife's problems. Some of it was me. You see, the day I went up to the pagan temple to get gone, I didn't go in. I sent somebody after her. I wasn't going in there. She came out and I said, listen, girl, God told me to marry you, but you're going to have to change your ways. I ain't putting up with that. She agreed. But looking back, I remember insisting to make I remember insisting for her to make a commitment to me. But as, the, but as the man of the house, I never taught her how to make a commitment to God. Therefore when, she, uh, therefore, when the problems came, there wasn't enough inner power to combat the outward pressure. I saw it when she started slipping. When the pressure got too much. Whenever 
If you leave God, it's never at once. It's always little by little and bit by bit. Bless you, Lord. It's never a blowout. It's always a slow leak. Yes, it is. When she got tired of my God and religion, she would just start staying out later and later. Yeah. Bless you, Lord. Then she stayed out all night. Then she stayed out three nights. Then she stayed gone a week. And finally, she just didn't come back at all. She had been gone a year. So I decided to retrace my steps and go back up to Mount Tabor. I wanted to talk to God. When I got there, I felt His presence. I knew God was there. Yes. And I cried, God, I know you're here. You knew she was going to do this, didn't you? Amen. You knew she was going to break my heart. You knew she was going to walk away from her husband and her children. You knew that. God said, Hosea, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. He said, where is Goma? I said, where is Goma? You God? You know where she is. I don't know. She's been gone a year. He said, how do you feel about it? I said, do you know how she plagued me? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, but that's not what I asked you. Yeah. I asked you, how do you feel about it? I said, do you know I'm the laughing stock now? He said, yeah, I, I know, but that's, that's not what I asked you. I want to know how you feel about it. God, do you know that they say she tipped mm -hmm. out, stayed out, and moved out? Yeah, but that's not what I ask you. How do you feel about it? So I said, God, are we alone? He said, we alone. I said, I still love her. He said, what did you say? I said, I still love her. He said, I feel you. I feel you because now you feel me. He said, listen, Hosea, I had to send you through the crucible of domestic difficulty to get you ready. Now you are ready to represent me. Get off this mountain and go tell Israel that God doesn't want a divorce. Amen. Tell her I Amen. want to renew my vows. Tell her I still love her. Amen. Tell her if my people who are called by my name yes. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my Amen. face and turn from their wicked ways, then they'll hear from heaven and I'll heal the, heal the land. Thank you, Lord. You should have heard me getting down that mountain. Amen. Just as I started to run, he said, Hosea, one last time. I said, what now, God? He said, you do know I had to deal with the unfaithfulness of a wife. I had also had to deal with the unforgiveness of a husband. Mm -hmm. You see, I always understood why she needed me, but I didn't, I didn't understand why I needed her. He wanted me to know God's unfathomable gift of forgiveness. The God we serve is a God of grace. Yes, he is. Here, I wanted God to forgive me, but I was unwilling to forgive her. What about that? God wanted to teach the forgive, the forgiven how to forgive. Some of you looking at me this morning right here go to church every Sunday and you shout and talk Thanks. about how much you love God whom you've never seen but you hate your brother or your sister. See. You see every day. God told me to tell you to quit shaking and faking. If you can't love the people you see you're certainly not going to love him. Well, I learned one thing then, and I got to go. Righteousness without love is nothing more than self-righteousness. If you can't love people like Gomer, you can't love God. Because it's people like Gomer that God especially loves. He loves them back to the fold. And if you have God in your heart, 
He will teach you how to love people like Gomer. Here's the conclusion of my story. <coughs> I was at my home out in the field, and this man from Judah came by and told me he had seen my wife. He was way out by the house, and he was waving and hollering at me, Hosea, Hosea. I tied a knot in my sack, and I started my way through the, the corn stalks and walked up to him and said, I walked up to him and he said, you'll never guess who I seen up at the marketplace. He said, I saw Gomer. He said, she didn't look like she looked when she was with you. You see, the years of sin have stripped her from her glory. She has on slave clothes. He said, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but I thought I would come by and tell you. So I went into my house, got down on my knees, and I asked God, what to do. And he said, I thought you said you loved her. I said, I do. He said, well, you can't stop now. You got to go all the way. Amen. So I reached up in my closet. I donned myself with my prophetic regalia. And I got out there and started walking the roads. And that same fellow that told me that he'd seen my wife, he must have told everybody. Because every time I got to a cross intersection, there were those crowds that gathered. You know, the haters, the haters, yes. you know. When, when, when you have trouble in your home, there's always the haters. Yes. They want to throw salt on your game. I was trying to get my game together, but they kept throwing salt on my game. As I passed, I heard some in the crowd, crowd saying, there goes Hosea. He's on his way to see Gomer. We're going to follow him. Because we know when he gets there, he's going to break off something awful on her. But they didn't know what God had put in my Amen. heart. Amen. So I got around the corner and I saw my wife. There was an auctioneer and he said, We have a woman here. Her name is Gomer. Anybody here willing to pay the price? And I had to suffer the indignity of other men bidding on my wife. I didn't know if the auctioneer could see me over the crowd, and I hollered, Mr. Auctioneer, that's my wife. He said, I know it is, but she's a slave now. In order for you to get her back, you got to pay the price. I said, five shekels. Another said, seven. Another said 10. I said 12 shekels. Another said 13. I said, let me see how much I got. I said, 15 shekels, a barley, and a half. He said, sold to the highest bidder. As she came to meet me, I said, come on. As we made our way to the, to the house, I saw how grateful she was. I said, let me take you home with me. I got to go now. But you need to know this because this is the message. My story was just to get you ready to hear about another story. To get you ready to hear about the love of Jesus. What I did for Goma is nothing compared to what he did for you. Thank you, Jesus. How I love Goma is nothing compared to how he loves you. So in two minutes, let me tell you what he did. Back there in the Garden of Eden, when man sinned, God called the summit meeting and said, man has sinned. What are we going to do? Justice said, let the wages of sin be death. Jesus arrested the motion and said, let the wages of sin be death, but let the gift, let the gift of God be eternal life. Praise the Lord. And I'll be that gift. Amen. He told Justice, go sit down on Calvary and wait for me. Jesus went down to Calvary, waited on him over 400 years. You, Ezekiel came by, and he said, I saw him. He said, he looked like a wheel inside the middle of a wheel. Mm -hmm. Job said, I saw him. He said, he looked like a horse pawing in the valley. Mm -hmm. Daniel said, I saw him. He said, he looked like a rock hewed out of a mountain. Mm -hmm. Amos said, I saw him. Said he looked like a plumb line. Solomon saw him. 
He said he looked like the lily of the valley in the rose of Sharon. Amen. But one Friday on the hill called Calvary, yes. Jesus came carrying a cross on his shoulder. Thank you, Jesus. They did nail his hands and his feet, and he did die, but he didn't stay dead. Amen. The Bible says early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand, Amen. power to save, power to change, power to redeem, and power to save. Amen. And you know what? He wants to take you home with him. Amen. But you have to make the choice. That's right. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, we thank you for this uh, testimony of Hosea. Yes, Father. I thank you, Lord, for helping me. I knew you would, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank Father. you for that. Lord, I pray, God, that there's someone here today lost. Yes, Lord, that they would speak with somebody before they leave here today. And God, I pray that you'd draw all of us closer to you. Amen. God, help us through this new year, yes. uh, Lord, to uh, give us the unction to, uh, Lord, to, to do all that we can for you because you're worthy. Thank you for this church, Lord. I thank you for the folks that come out. I thank you for the, uh, their patience for listening, God. I pray, God, that you, uh, Lord, give them a good uh, rest of the day. Bring us back tonight, dear God, so that we can worship you in spirit and truth. Thank you, Lord, so much for being so good to me. And I know these folks pray the same thing. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you listening. Thank you. Amen. Amen.